A California police department is refusing to release body cam video and its legal argument could actually roll back law enforcement transparency across the state. As California investigative correspondent Julie Watts explains, CBS is suing not just to get the video, but to prevent an agency from effectively rewriting state law. Yeah, we've been working with law enforcement for nearly a year to try to avoid this lawsuit. But one local agency is simply refusing to release its full video, which the public has a right to see. And if we don't push back, their interpretation of the law could have a ripple effect across the state. But my favorite part is the binoculars. These days, now they look closer. Seven year old Sawyer is always on the lookout. And I keep thinking about bad guys. And he has good reason. It was really scary. Sawyer's mom, Kelsey, decided to take the kids to this popular park last April during spring break. There were kids all over kids at camp and kids without parents. Little did they know, a Highway Patrol special task force had already made what turned out to be a fatal decision to serve a planned high-risk search warrant to an armed felon at a public park without clearing the park or notifying local police. I just really don't understand why they, they chose this park that day. Multiple shots fired, suspect, white male. For days, CHP had been surveilling a felon with a history of running from police. But instead of serving the warrant at his home, they chose to wait until he took his dogs to a busy park. And then we see cops chasing after a criminal. Court records allege when officers confronted suspect Eric Abril, he began shooting at them. Officer from gunshot went to the chest and hand. CHP fired back as Abril ran toward the batting cages. That's when we got on the ground. Where kids were playing. And then gunshots were fired roughly 20. Bullet holes near the batting cages revealed just how close the children were to being shot in the crossfire. It was terrifying. Jim McKeegan and his high school sweetheart Patty were out for a walk. They just celebrated their 50th anniversary. It would be their last. He's going to shoot the hostage. As local police swarmed the park, Jim was killed and Abril used Patty as a human shield. I was thinking it would shoot me. Park staff quickly rushed kids into the library where they had to hide under tables to avoid the windows. He was too scared to go to sleep. He would double check all the locks. Nearly a year later, the community is still desperate for answers and accountability. I would ask CHP if they would make the same decision if their kids were playing at the park. Keep in mind, CHP is the governor's police force with jurisdiction across the state. It could happen to anyone's family at any park. But CHP won't answer questions or acknowledge any policy changes when serving high-risk warrants. It feels like they're trying to cover it up. So we've been searching for answers through public records, including video from that day. Guys, get down. Which appears to begin after Mr. McKeegan was killed. The, suspect is in custody. the sheriff's department hasn't released his coroner's report, but multiple sources tell CBS News it's inconclusive about where the fatal shot came from. <laughs> meaning it's not clear who fired Whoever's it. in the field, you're in our backdrop. Roseville PD, which took over the investigation, says it's confident the suspect fatally shot the victim, but refuses to release its full body camera video, releasing just four 39-second edited clips. 123 crossfire, I was the one who fired the shot. Which appear to show officers shooting at each other amid the chaos, but provide little transparency or context for what went wrong that day. The risk to the children, the McKeegans, and to officers. Drop the gun. State law requires agencies release any recording that relates to a law enforcement shooting or critical incident. For instance, remember when 14-year-old Valentina was killed trying on quinceanera dresses in a Southern California dressing room? A stray bullet pierced the dressing room wall, killing Valentina, who died in her mother's arms while hiding and praying. Per LAPD policy, based on state law, they had to release the video of the actions and events leading up to and including the critical incident. San Francisco PD has a similar policy and hosts its videos on the city's YouTube channel. But Roseville PD is now attempting to rewrite state law. Instead of releasing recordings that depict an incident involving the discharge of a firearm, they claim they only have to release the video of the discharge of the firearm. The video is public property. San Francisco Assemblymember Phil Ting wrote the law that Roseville's trying to change. He worries Roseville's interpretation could prompt other agencies to start withholding video, stressing the public pays for the police cameras and the servers they store that video on so the video belongs to the public. They're arguing that under your legislation, they're only required to release the 39 seconds when the bullets actually left the gun. When you drafted this legislation, did you intend to define the critical incident as 
only the moments of the discharge of the firearm? Absolutely not, because if that was the case, that would have been written to law. In order to provide transparency, you need to know what's happening leading up to the confrontation. And in California, if a public agency refuses to release a public record, your only option is to sue. I imagine it'll be a court uh, decision on this. Law enforcement consultant John McGinnis supports police transparency, but the former Sacramento County Sheriff also supports Roseville PD in this case. Roseville PD is saying, we're not going to abide by the law. We're going to make you sue us to get this video, and taxpayers are going to have to foot the bill. Is that fair? I don't know why they're withholding it, but if they have, if they believe they're on solid ground, if they're doing the right thing, I say stand on principle and let another branch of government make that decision. We've now filed our body camera lawsuit. Panda Brill is awaiting his trial. Escape from the hospital. Now facing additional charges for escaping about a month after the shootout. And in a twist of fate, they found it at Grandma's house. He was found hiding in the creek just feet from Sawyer's grandma's front door. I know 911. Sawyer's learned a lot over the past year. But I don't have a phone. Maybe more than any seven year old should have to. But I do have a plan. Kelsey's hoping the full body camera video I would be like will shed light on CHP's plan that day. Dodging and dodging the gun shoots. Providing answers and accountability. And then I would hide. So other kids don't feel feel the need to plan for the next CHP shootout. Now, to be clear, the purpose of fighting for this video is not to air graphic or sensational images. It's to provide context and clarity and closure for a traumatized community. And the purpose of this lawsuit is to prevent one agency from effectively rewriting state law.